Hey, what's up, guys? It's TechZoomer talking to you here. And in today's video, I want to talk about the M1 Max MacBook Pro that you can see on my left. This computer has been on my hands for about one year and a half. And so I decided today to make a long term review. I gotta tell you, this has not been more than perfection and less than perfection. This computer has been perfect to every single count. I think that I was not expecting this well made of computer when I bought it. It was very expensive, yes. It was about $3,600, but it was totally worth it. I think now, in 2023, you should still buy the M1 Max MacBook Pro. Although there's the M2 Max available, I think that the M1 Max MacBook Pro is the better option. Because I think that this computer, being the M1 Max, is now cheaper, easier to get, and you can get it refurbished on some store. And for those prices that you can get there, like $2,000, $2,500, this option of the computer is insanely fast, insanely powerful, and probably overkill for most of you. But if you are looking for a very, very future-proof computer, don't overlook the M1 Max MacBook Pro. This is an excellent, excellent machine. So if you are excited, don't forget to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. Let's talk about my long-term review of my most expensive Apple product ever, my M1 Max MacBook Pro, shall we? So this machine, when I bought it new, cost me $3,600. Now you can get it around for $2,500, but still, it's a still very expensive computer. But for what you get is a crazy, crazy deal. Listen to this. This computer gets a 16 inch mini LED display, the same found on the M2 Max computers. Then this computer also features three Thunderbolt 4 ports, one HDMI port, one headphone jack, one SD card slot, one MagSafe port, can charge up to 140 watts. This has a 99 watt hour battery so the most that a laptop can carry on a airplane. The part left here is about 20 hours of video streaming and this will destroy every single benchmark that you throw at it. The video editing performance here is insane. There's nothing wrong with this computer, like nothing wrong. Only if you try to do some 3D rendering on, I don't know, some non-optimized version of an app or a program for Apple Silicon is that you will find some limitations. But if you will play around all of these optimized apps like the Adobe Suite, like Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and even some games that support the Apple Silicon transition, then, oh my God, you will love this computer. It's so fast, and for the price you can get it, you will get an amazing display, an amazing keyboard, trackpad, the best on the business. Like, none of those crappy keyboards from the 2019, 2018 Intel machines, none of those crappy Windows trackpads, none of that. You will get the perfect hardware for your money. This computer, in my opinion, is the most premium feeling laptop ever made because it's the same laptop and the same chassis as the M2 Max computer. So in terms of quality, there's nothing better than the hardware of this computer. The only difference is this one can only be specced out until 64 gigabytes, while the M2 Max version can get up to 96 gigabytes, if I'm not wrong. And of course, this computer has the M1 Max, while the other one has the M2 Max. The M2 Max is about 35% faster on GPU performances, which is the top out of the crop, like the most amount of performance you'll get off that computer. And then it's about 10 to 15% better on the CPU performances. But keep in mind that the M2 Max runs much hotter and can overclock itself. So for example, the M2 is more of an overclocked version of the M1. The M2 Pro is an overclocked version of the M1 Pro. And so the M2 Max is an overclocked version of the M1 Max. Imagine like a chip that can go hotter and run hotter for longer periods of time. In terms of comparison, I don't think it's worth it to upgrade from the M1 Max to the M2 Max. And even right now, if you can find an M2 Max refurbished or used, go for that. It's the most recent machine. Those 35% in GPU and 15% in CPU might actually be a good thing for you if you are a video editor. But if you are a normal Joe or a professional like me, but you don't require the full performance of an M1 Max, then why would you spend more on the M2 Max? It doesn't make any sense for me. And th that's why I think this machine is way more than enough. And if you think you are not a part of this group, and if you think that you need more performance than the M1 Max, then listen to this. Marquez Brownlee uses an M1 Max. Mr. Who's the Boss uses an M1 Max. They reviewed the M2 Max, they used it, and then they got to the conclusion that they do not need to upgrade for that machine. So why would you? That's my question. Those guys edit 8K footage, D-log, S-log, whatever. Perfect footage, very, very heavy. The M1 Max can do it. Why would you switch it? just for the extra saying, oh, I have more performance now. Fine. The only place that I would see that it's actually worth it 
to switch to the M2 Max will be to add 3D rendering because the extra 35% on GPU might actually be useful on apps that are not supported. But on apps that are optimized and supported for Apple Silicon, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, this is a beast. Trust me, this is a beast. Can destroy every single footage that you put on it, can destroy every single task that you give it. Like editing photos here, stupidly fast. There's nothing that this machine cannot do. And then there's the fact that you get the same hardware as the M2 Max. <laughs> I think I'm comparing this to the M2 Max because it's the closest machine that I can compare to. The closest, I would say, rival to this machine. Because on the Windows side, oh my God, there's no comparison. This is much better, much better built. The performance here in performance per watt, performance per dollar, in my opinion, is higher. And who cares about Windows? Mac OS is the best operating system, in my opinion. This version has one terabyte of storage. And this is the only place that I ask you to be very careful while specking this machine out. Now, you will probably won't be able to spec this machine out. You will only find specific models on retail. For example, a specific model of uh, M1 Max MacBook Pro with 32 GPU cores and one terabyte of storage. You won't be able to buy it refurbished or used on eBay. You will not be able to actually set it, set it up and choose the storage and the RAM that you want like before. For that, you've got to buy new, buy the M2 Max. But if you are looking for these computers, I would say the sweetest spot is the M1 Max with the 32 GPU cores. Max that out. Don't be afraid. And I would say that getting one to two terabytes of storage is the sweet spot, but I wouldn't get in the 512, nor even the higher spec ones like the four terabyte or eight terabyte, because of the storage is extremely expensive. 512 gigabytes is too low, in my opinion, for the machine. I think that after a while, you will be actually needing to get very huge files on your machine to video edit, photo edit, or 3D rendering, and having only 512 on your machine will require a lot of external SSDs, so it doesn't make much sense to have only 512. But having one terabyte or two terabytes of storage will be more than enough. Because later, you can buy external SSDs, external hard drives that you can use to store your things up or to video edit on the go. It doesn't make any sense to buy the four terabyte or eight terabyte versions because they cost 1,000 more, 2,000 more. And with that, you can buy more laptops, iPhones, iPads. It doesn't make any sense. While up buying like a one terabyte SSD, external one, will cost you around two, $300, the most expensive ones. And buying like a two to five terabyte SSD is like three to $400. So why would you spend like $2,000 on eight terabytes of storage on your machine? Doesn't make any sense. And then there's of course the fact that most people want to max out the RAM. I would say that 64 is completely overkill for Apple Silicon, but 32 gigabytes of RAM is a very good choice. That was my choice. And I think it's the better one for the future proofing of this machine. I think this machine will last me a long time just because of the RAM itself. Because I bought 32 gigabytes of RAM, I think this machine will last me very long time on very heavy tasks. 32 gigabytes of RAM on even an Apple Silicon chip, like this chip shares the RAM for all of the components, 32 gigabytes of RAM for GPU, so it's 32 gigabytes of VRAM, 32 gigabytes of RAM for the CPU. Every single thing shares the same pool, the same 32 gigabytes of RAM from the ARM chip. That's why the ARM technology is so efficient. So I think that the 32 gigabytes of RAM option is a very, very good sweet spot to buy on this machine. Other than that, I think that the performance here, like I told you, is insane. You have amazing hardware. Every single thing has been going like perfect. No stutters. Editing on Final Cut Pro has been perfect. Exporting videos extremely fast. I've edited hundreds of videos on this machine, exported hundreds of videos on this machine. I've done tons of work here. Now I edit log footage for my drone footage. I edit the log footage for my iPhone footage. Later on this year, I will buy a camera from Sony, and I'm pretty sure this machine can handle that much. So this has a very, very bright future ahead. I think that this machine will be, in my opinion, my biggest and best buy ever. I think it was expensive. Yes, it was really expensive. Trust me, like $3,600 for me is almost all of my money, but I think it was a good investment. If you have a good computer set up for like five, six years, you will be good. You will never think about it your quality of life increases. Like the IO selection here is so much better than the old Intel machines. Having an HDMI port is so useful when you go into universities, you plug in your projector and you have your presentation. It's so useful when you go into somewhere, living room or some friend's house, you're gonna connect this to your TV and watch a movie. The headphone jack is where I think, the, the, the headphone jack is where I don't use it that much. But I understand why Apple puts it in because of some people like to use 
monitors, audio monitors, and they need this for professional work. That's why they put it on the MacBook Pro. Of course, the three Thunderbolt 4 ports don't need any explanation. Extremely fast, like 40 gigabytes of speed, I think. They are extremely fast, reliable. They charge your computer from every single angle, so from the left, from the right. And then on top of that, you have the MagSafe port, which is incredible. I love the MagSafe port. So easy to cling on, so safe to use. You don't understand how many times the MagSafe port has saved this computer. Like I'm editing videos on my kitchen and then someone trips on my cord. And oh my God, I get scared. I almost tripped out, but I remind myself I have MagSafe, so I'm cool. If I had an iPad, actually I broke my iPad that way. So yeah, if I had MagSafe on the iPad, I wouldn't have broken the screen, but now I have it on my MacBook Pro, so all things fine. In addition to that, I do believe that the extra hardware here, like the extra SD card slot is a very, very good thing because I use my drone a lot. And to take footage and to transfer here is really easy. Just pick out my micro SD, put it on an adapter, like not a, an adapter for USB-C, not that. An adapter for a bigger SD card slot, not micro SD card slot, but I have those on my camera bag or my drone bag. Anyway, it's really small, it's like this. You just plug it in, really, really easy. I'm really excited to share the next couple of years with this computer. And the hardware does not stop there. The IO is great. Like I told you, the trackpad is the perfect trackpad ever. Like the multi-gesture system here is insane. It does not click, it's an haptic touch trackpad, but it's really, really good. Like I cannot explain you the sensation of using it. You have to go to an Apple store and use it. And then there's the keyboard, which fixed tons of problems that I had with the butterfly keyboard. I love the fitting of that keyboard, don't get me wrong. I used it for like four or five years. But now using this keyboard is much, much better. The Magic Keyboard is more tactile, it's better, has more travel, more comfortable. The sound is actually better, not as troublesome, and it's more reliable. The most important part is being more reliable. And you can get all of this on the M1 Max machine for only $2,500. And then of course, there's the biggest problem on a Mac ever, like since they were launched, and that's the webcam quality. This machine is the first machine to ever have a 1080p webcam, and it's actually pretty, pretty good. I, I made some tests for you to listen. So listen to my microphone quality, which according to Apple is studio quality. I wouldn't say it's studio quality, but I would say it's pretty good. And the camera quality here is one of the best I've ever seen on a laptop. Take a look and let me know in the comments below what you think. This is the microphone and camera test for the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch. Let me know how it looks on the comments down below. Then there's also the speakers. And here, like the MacBook Pro destroys every single computer on its category. The speakers here have not found yet anything that compared to it. My iPad Pro, my iPhone, other Windows laptops, nothing. Nothing touches these speakers. Not even the 14 inch MacBook Pro from the same generation. Nothing touches these speakers. They are the best ever on a laptop. And the M2 Max came with the same pair of speakers. So if you're going for the M1 Max, you're still getting the top notch speaker of the game. And so I made some tests for you to listen and oh my god it's crazy crazy how well they are they are very very well pitched the sound is high very high you can hear the mids the bass is perfect this computer almost trembles when it's very very loud and it's just perfect i cannot describe this audio in any more way listen to this and you will understand why i'm telling you that, that this destroys any competition on the laptop game <laughs> Like you heard, you now trust me, right? Okay, let's finish this review by talking about the screen, which in my opinion is the best screen ever made on a computer, on a laptop at least. And this is the same screen that you can find on the M2 Max MacBook Pro. And this is really important because these screens are in my opinion, the mini LED 16 inch, 120 hertz capable screens are in my opinion, the best ever made on a laptop. 
And if you can get this huge 16 inch, very bright, very contrasty, the blacks, pure blacks on a budget, like a $2,500 budget, the same like as the 16 inch Mac Pro with the M2 Max, the one year and a half newer computer, then why wouldn't you? This is the biggest perk of this laptop. Trust me, even the 14 inch has this virtue. These computers are, in my opinion, the best and most complete computers. One of the reasons are the screens, of course. These screens are insane. After you start using them, you will feel that every single screen ever made is trash. Trust me, like I have this Huawei Mate GT. It's not bad, but after using this screen, I feel like this screen is trash. I even feel like my iPad Pro screen is trash. It's from 2018, it's an LCD, it was a very good screen and I bought it. But compared to this one, trash. I cannot find a $1,000 to $2,000 range monitor that can compete with this laptop screen. And if this laptop costs from two to $2,500, then just the screen alone is worth half of that. And then if, on top of that, you get insane RAM, insane performance, insane IO, insane trackpad, insane keyboard, very premium build, the Apple logo, Mac OS, Apple ecosystem integration. Like there's endless possibilities with this MacBook Pro. And I don't see why you should not buy it in 2023. If you are a video editor, photo editor, normal Joe, average Joe, someone that just wants a powerful laptop to do simple things, there's no better option than the M1 Max MacBook Pro, in my opinion, in 2023. But, but this is a huge but. If you are on a budget, you only have like $1,500. Do not buy the M2 MacBook Air, not even the 15 inch that is rumored for double double DC. No, save your money and buy the M1 Pro MacBook Pro or even the M2 Pro if it's on a discount. Those are the best value Macs ever made. I don't care whoever tells you otherwise. Those Macs are really, really good. They have all of the same features as this computer has, only a downsized chip, the M1 Pro, which is still very fast for 95% of you watching this video. And then the screen is a little bit smaller and the battery is a little bit smaller. But who cares? The same battery life, the same screen quality, and of course, a little bit less performance with the M1 Pro, but only, only on GPU, not CPU. So yeah, guys. That's my review of the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch in 2023. In my opinion, it's the best value Mac in the performance range. And in my opinion, it's the best Mac ever made. This changed the game for being the best laptop in that time. And I think, just think, this is my opinion. Right now, it's still the best laptop ever made. Although Apple refined it with the M2 Max version, I think the M1 Max is still on top just because of the changes that it had when it was launched. I will still keep using it for the next few years. And I do believe Marcus Brownlee, those kinds of YouTubers, will still hold it on for a few more time until we see the M3. So if those guys can hold that computer for one year more or one and a half years more, you can buy this computer and use it. Fine, no issues. This is my recommendation for you guys. Buy the M1 Max Macu Pro 16 inch while you can on a discount, refurbished, wherever you can find it more cheap. I think this computer is totally worth it. But let me know in the question below what you think. Do you like this computer? Did you enjoy Apple Silicon until now? Do you think that Apple Silicon transition changed the MacBook Pro forever? Or are you a Windows guy? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Follow my social networks, Twitter and Instagram. This has been Tech Summer talking to you here. Bye-bye.